this guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Questions of hell, oral questions, the honorable member from Regina Capel. Governments from countries that are hostile to Canada, who actively try to harm our citizens and our country, interfered with the most fundamental aspect of our society, our democracy. An intelligence report claims that there are members of this House whose loyalty is not solely to the people of Canada, but to foreign governments who wish us harm. And what has been the Liberal response so far? They won't release the names. And now the Liberal member for Pickering Uxbridge says, quote, boo-hoo, get over it. Instead of telling Canadians to just walk it off, why don't they release the names of MPs who are working against Canada? Yes. The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, my friend from Regina Capel knows very well that no government is in a position to release sensitive information about particular pieces of intelligence. I have a suggestion for him. He sits a couple of seats away in this place from his leader. If they were sincere in understanding some of the information underlying the public version of the report of the National Security Committee of Parliamentarians, his leader could avail himself of the offer that I'm happy to reiterate again today to get the security clearance, get all the information that the Committee on Parliamentarians had, and then he could come to a reasoned judgment in this place. The Honourable Member from Regina Capel. This isn't about offering secret briefings to MPs who have to keep all that information secret. Right. It's about releasing the names so that Canadians can know which MPs are working exactly. against the interests of Canada. So I've got a very simple question. He should be able to answer this one. Do any of the MPs listed on this report of compromised members who are working against the interests of Canada, do any of those MPs currently sit in, ca in Cabinet, yes or no? Good the Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, I'll give full points to my friend from Regina Capel to try and get me to do indirectly what he knows very well I can't do directly. Mr. Speaker, I'll remind our friend that our government is the first government to take this issue seriously. In the previous Conservative government, they did absolutely nothing to secure our democratic institutions, Zero. in Zero. spite of public warnings from CSIS for the two, last two yep. years they were in government. I worked last summer with my friend from Regina Capel to set up the Hogg Commission, for example. We look forward to Justice Hogg's recommendations and would be happy to work with him in terms of implementing them. Here, here. The Honourable Member from Regina Capel. Mr. Speaker, they sat on warnings from our intelligence agencies so that they could protect their own partisan interests. And they have refused to hand over cabinet confidences to the Hogue uh, Commission. But this one should actually be really simple. Cabinet ministers get to see everything. They get a say on everything the Government of Canada does, and they get to personally lobby the Prime Minister any day they want. Can the Minister assure Canadians that nobody who sits around the cabinet table today is on this list of compromised MPs who are working against Canada. The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, our friend from Regina Capel should know very well that our national security and intelligence agencies, including the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, take all of the issues of national security very seriously. And Mr. Speaker, our friend should know very well that our government has taken, other, more than any other government, steps to ensure that our democratic institutions are protected, and he should have confidence that we'll continue to do that work, something that his previous government did absolutely nothing, nothing about. Zero. Nothing about. Zero. Another day, and we're still waiting for the Minister of Employment to introduce us to Other Randy, the one who was cashing checks from a company that was lobbying the government, winning contracts, and using the minister's name to do it. That's not allowed. It's illegal. The text messages reveal that someone named Randy at the minister's company was part of a $500,000 fraud. So will the employment minister finally get up on his feet and tell everyone the super secret identity of the Other Randy? The Honourable Minister for Employment and Workforce Development. Mr. Speaker, I am all too happy to 
set the record straight. I have had no role in this company since being elected in 2021. Regarding the day in question, I have shared my phone records to the committee and with the commissioner, which confirms that I am not the person in this story. Mr. Speaker, I have said it. The companies have said it. And now I've proved it. I was not involved. Mr. Speaker, let's get back to working for Canadians and focusing on the real issues. The Honourable Member from Thornhill. The Minister hasn't proved a single thing. We're looking for who he called the other Randy. I'm pretty confident that we don't actually have to look very far because the other Randy might be right here. The one who broke the conflict of interest law, the one who broke the lobbying act, and who broke the criminal code. So will the Employment Minister from Edmonton let us know if Randy is in the room? The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House of Commons. Mr. Speaker, the Minister just answered that question. That's right. What can we do right now? The Honourable Member from Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan. Speaker, here's a story that is a bit randy about a Liberal's excuse that seemed just too handy. Blame others for failures. They just could not resist. But if you're going to blame someone, be sure they exist. The Employment Minister continues to blame the mysterious other Randy for his ethical trouble. Meanwhile, after nine years, all this country's problems have actually been caused by the other Justin. Will the person responsible for this scandal, will the real Randy please stand up? Stand up! I'm going to encourage members uh, not to skate too close to the line in terms of referring to other members uh, by their first names. Um, I understand that uh, that on the first name that was mentioned, that 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 was that would made sense, but it's the second name that was mentioned that is just skating a little bit too close. The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House of Commons. So, Mr. Speaker, we just got an interesting little behind-the-scenes insight into how this works over there. The Minister stood up and comprehensively <laughs> swatted away all these questions. What followed was two more questions that those members are so proud of wittily writing in the morning and rehearsing in front of the mirror that they just have to get it off their chest, Mr. Speaker. what's going on in this house. They don't want to talk about lower interest rates. They don't want to talk about 8 out of 10 Canadians being better off. That opposition just wants to talk about their side. What did I miss yesterday? The Honourable... Merci. You're the Honourable Member from St. Albert, Edmonton. Mr. Speaker, contrary to the Minister's representation, he has not turned over all of his phone records and text messages. Text messages reveal that someone named Randy from a company that the Minister of Employment has a 50 per cent interest in was involved in a business deal now mired in allegations of fraud. The Minister says it wasn't him, it was some other Randy. Trouble is, no one can identify who that other Randy is. So has the Minister in the past 48 hours poured over the employment records of the handful of employees at his company to find Randy? <laughs> The Honourable, the Honourable Leader of the Government in the House of Commons. Just when we thought we had heard from the final member who was practicing all morning in the mirror, up stops another one to look straight into the camera over there and relay a question that was just answered several minutes ago. I think these people over there learn, need to be a little more agile. The Minister has answered the question. The Honourable Member from St. Albert, Edmonton. Mr. Speaker, if the Minister is the Randy in the text messages, then the Minister broke the law, including contravening the Conflict of Interest Act. It shouldn't be difficult to find the other Randy if he exists. If the Minister didn't break the law, then where's Randy? Here, here. 
The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House of Commons. I just want to remind the member that I'm over here, not over there. But, Mr. Speaker. to remind uh, all members crooks over there. that uh, questions should be addressed through the chair, but members can look where they wish uh, to ask or answer questions. The Honourable Minister, uh, Leader of the Government, has 24 seconds left on the clock. Mr. Speaker, the Minister has responded comprehensively to all of these questions. And what I find a little off-putting in the tone and tenor of the member's question is that in this place we are all to presume each other to be honourable. That is not what that member did, and that member should carefully consider the kinds of words that he uses in this House. The Honourable Member from Sturgeon Park, Park uh, St Mr. Speaker, me, Superman, Sturgeon that, River Parkland. Randy, we know the identity of these fictional characters, but Canadians want to know who. Randy. The mysterious Randy is in control of a fraudulent company called Global Health Imports, and his business partner, Stephen Anderson, says that he's a public official. And by pure coincidence, the Minister of Employment by the same name founded Global Health Imports and is a 50% shareholder. Now, we just heard the Minister say that he's not involved, but isn't he at all curious about who this Randy fellow is that's committing fraud at a company he owns 50% of? Why won't he tell us who this Randy is? The Honourable Leader of the Government to the House of Commons. Well, I'm glad, Mr. Speaker, that this segment has been brought to you by what goes on in the House of Commons. Because here we have yet another Conservative member who toiled over this witty text all morning, looked in the mirror, hoped the Leader was there, because if the Leader were there, he might be noticed by him. Then he's going to put it on Facebook. But what he won't do is put this answer on Facebook, happily saving me from a thousand trolls online. But this member should know better that he asked those questions.